Hello, this is Paul Race, and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to talk about a project, it hopefully not a major pro project, but a project involving a 46-year-old uh, ovation that the owner has some questions about. I have a call into him uh, about some specific issues, but I wanted to get started looking at it today. So I'm uh, uh, going to talk, talk through what my steps are as I look at this. Now the first thing I noticed when I got it is that the case looks like it was dropped off of a tall building. Um, now, theoretically, uh, the ovation cases when they were first new were almost good enough and solid enough to be considered flight cases. And uh, some people have done that with them. However, uh, this is kind of an extreme. I don't know if you can really see that, but there are places where uh, the outer coating has really been chipped away. Uh, theoretically, if you were uh, going to use this as a flight case, there was a canvas uh, coverall that you would put on it and would, would uh, protect this outer shell just a little bit uh, from anything but the, the, the craziest damage. Well, that's okay, because inside, the case is just fine. And the fellow who owns this can use the guitar, in this case, till the end of time. They're made very well. In fact, it's in better shape than some of my cases on the inside. So that's enough of that. The fellow who, uh, the friend of a friend who has this, um, was complaining to our mutual friend because he was saying it just didn't sound right. And uh, the mutual friend said, well, Paul has had ovations since they were invented, basically. And he might know something about it. And uh, so he, he called me about it, and I had a look, and the, uh, the theory was, uh, what I was told was that, you know, the, the damage on the case had nothing to do with the, with the damage to the guitar. Um, apparently, at some point in the past, a woman put her foot through the face of the guitar. Now, I have been in a lot of situations where I went home and I said, I will never play there again, I don't feel safe. I don't feel like my equipment is safe. I've had equipment damaged by people, like especially uh, uh, people who don't really know how to play guitar, but pick up a guitar and scratch the daylights out of it because they they think that if the finger pick doesn't hit the face of the guitar, you're not doing it right. I've had a number of things like that happen. I had a fellow tune a classically built 12 string uh, up to pitch one time. He says, why does he have this tuned down a step? Well, it's a miracle he wasn't killed because a bridge came off and snapped up in the air. It could have hit him in the, in the forehead and killed him. But I screwed it back together and that was fine. Of all the damage I've ever had done to any of my instruments, I have never yet had somebody put a foot through the guitar or a banjo or any of my other instruments. But that's apparently what happened to this one. Now, if you notice the face of this, it looks very new. And there's a reason for that. And that's that the owner sent it back to, uh, to Cayman and they put a new face on it. The uh, Balladeer has a double A solid Sitka spruce face, which uh, when it uh, gets half a chance to age, kicks out a boatload of sound. A lot of people don't like ovations because they've played the plywood versions, they've played the, uh, the celebrities, they've played the applause and so on. There is a world of difference between those instruments and the, uh, the professional ovation instruments. And uh, this was an ovation balladeer. Originally was made in 1976. My ovations are just a little bit old. Uh, two of them are just a little bit older than that. One of them is a little bit newer than that. They all have their quirks. And one of the quirks of the older ovations, especially uh, the legends and the balladeers, is that they will actually develop a, a crack in the face between the two plates, the face plates. They're book match face plates. And there's, uh, there's plenty of bracing underneath them that doesn't go anywhere, nothing goes wonky, the guitar still sounds great, but it's uh, like your gap tooth cousin, uh, you see this crack when, when the guitar is played. Why doesn't this guitar have a uh, crack in a face plate, even though it was made in 1976? Think about that. That's a 46-year-old uh, guitar, and uh, yet doesn't have a crack in the face plate, because they sent it back to Cayman, and Cayman put a new face on it. Now, the uh, interesting thing about that is that the faces sound better as they age, and that's all there is to it. There's no magic to it. There's a reason why people kill themselves to buy 1939 Martin guitars and everything else, and that is that those old, those old instruments just playing flat out sound better. So he's the, the current owner of this ovation is concerned that it doesn't sound 
as good as it was before he sent it back. I am not remotely surprised. That said, when I received it, not only did this have this brand new shiny face on it, it also had some action issues. The action was a little high. The strings are kind of dead. Uh, it came out, uh, it came totally devoid of tuning, which is almost impossible because I can tune my ovations and uh, go back to them six months later and they're still perfectly in tune. So this hasn't been tuned for a while. Maybe he tuned it up once or twice when he got it back. But then that doesn't explain why the fingerboard needs clean. There's actual grime on the fingerboard that kind of builds up over the years as you own a guitar. And usually every other time I change strings, I will go ahead and clean the fingerboard off and I'll re-oil it to give a little bit more, uh, more protection to it. Let that dry thoroughly before I put the strings on and then I'm good to go. The other thing that happens, of course, is when you are adjusting a guitar, if I, I get into here and I turn the nut and adjust the action back, it's hard on the string. So typically what I will do is I'll make sure the guitar is in tune, I'll adjust it with the old strings, and then when I'm happy with that, I'll take those strings off, I'll clean up the guitar, polish the face, polish and clean up the, the fretboard, anything else like that that needs cleaned up. And then I'll uh, wait until that all dries thoroughly so that the oils don't kill the new strings. And then I'll put the new strings on and tune them. And usually you have to tune new strings a couple times before they, uh, before they keep their tune. That's okay. It's, uh, it was astounding to me that when I got this, it just, it just wasn't in tune at all. So I'm going to uh, tune this and then I'll come back. Uh, a few months ago, I restored a uh, ovation uh, solid top ovation for a friend. Uh, his top had been damaged, ovation replaced the top, but they didn't set it up. And I had this whole series on uh, setting them up. And instead what happened was the one of the main videos in that series didn't take at all. And that video had to do with adjusting the neck using a, um, a nut driver. This nut driver is the sort of thing that you put little, little, uh, bits in to turn it into a flathead or a Phillips head screwdriver. It's also the same size as the adjust the end of the adjustment rod in Ovation X. In this case, when I got it in, I put new strings on it and I didn't really play with the adjustment and it actually needs some adjustment. Um, I have detuned the strings and um, opened this up again so that you can, uh, I don't know if you can really see the little nut in there, but trust me, there's a little nut in there that this fits on just nice and I as I turn it it'll pull the neck back and the strings closer to the fingerboard they're not bad now but I like the action to be a little better and uh, the necks on ovations uh, they're pretty pretty reliable as a rule it's actually a five piece neck I don't know if you can see all these uh, these other little pieces slices each of those pieces goes in at a different angle so if the humidity wants the guitar neck to go one way the other piece, the same humidity will cause that other piece to go the other way, and it balances out. So once they're in adjustment, they tend to stay in adjustment for years, and they tend to not be, they tend to not be affected by humi humidity like a lot of other guitars. Okay, so this is me cranking that nut down. I don't want to say I want these strings laying on the fingerboard, but I want them down. If I go too far. Uh, I may have to crank it back. So let's see. That's pretty close. I'm going to go a little farther. If I was playing way up the neck, that would be... I could I could probably adjust the, uh, the lower the bridge just a little too if I came to it. It's not a uh, fancy bridge like it is on the electric ones. It's just a... Uh, this is just a, uh, a slice of bone here. So that could be filed down if it really came to it but I don't think that's going to be necessary. This is me sighting down the neck like you would a, uh, an arrow to see how straight it is. Um, I haven't pulled it back to where it's not straight anymore. I will tune it now and uh, come back to you in a second and see how the adjustment worked. And then this little video is going to go into the other stream of videos. And if it suddenly seems like my hair is longer or, or the guitar is a little different, that's why, because the other guitar... Went back to the owner. He was deliriously happy with it. And then I went to mix the videos, and it looked to me like uh, the video about this part of the process died. So I will be right back after I tune this guy up. I have tuned it back up again. I got this uh, guitar because uh, during COVID, 
Um, we're doing everything by way of Zoom or FaceTime or something. And uh, my didn't want I didn't want to leave my good guitar out in the workshop, which goes between 40 and 80 degrees. Let's be honest, it's not uh, it's not exactly heated and it's not exactly cool. And uh, so a year ago, I got this, and I wasn't disappointed with it. I cleaned it up, and I didn't do much else with it because then we stopped doing all those videos and zooms and facetimes and things. <laughs> Too bad. If this was it really needs a new set of strings on it. Um, I was when I got this out of the case, I was thinking that I had put new strings on. The, no, these are not new. Uh, they're not bad. Um, the previous owner must have replaced them sometime in the, sometime since the uh, Vietnam War. This guitar would have a brighter tone with new strings. That said, the action is not far off of where it needs to be. Um, if I was doing this for a client, I would let it sit for a day and then go back and do the same thing all over again just to be sure that I got the best action I possibly could. I would also check for fret buzz by doing this. And so on all the way up the guitar. Strings are not so low. If there's any real danger of them doing it past the fifth fret anyway, and I can still play it up there. Tell you what, I may come back tomorrow and adjust it so I can just have a little bit smoother action towards towards the top. But in the meantime, it's uh, it's in pretty good shape, and I'm going to let it go with that. I will be uh, returning to the other video now. If the guitar looks like the finish has changed, that's because it's a different guitar. But I did just want to show you this one little element of guitar setup that is so critical, but just didn't get into the last video made about it. Hello, uh, back to the Project Ovation Balladeer that I was working on previously. I just determined the face was replaced about a year ago. But uh, the guitar itself is uh, was made in 1976, which means that it's a 46-year-old guitar, which means that uh, the fellow who owned it went from having a 46-year-old solid Sitka spruce face to having a brand new solid Sitka spruce face. And he couldn't figure out why the guitar didn't have the sound, the tone, the sparkle, that it ha that it did before he had it had it fixed. Well, we have uh, we discussed it with the fellows since then, and uh, he I think he understands that it's not going to sound quite the same until it's 46 years older than it is now. Unfortunately, uh, neither he or I will probably be around to hear it. But this guitar should be because these things are like I said, they're built like a tank. When the uh, guitar came back, apparently, this is this is my guess. He sent this to Ovation. Uh, Ovation fixed it for him. Ovation has changed hands since this guitar was made, and uh, the new people were were very kind and very generous to fix it for him for a reasonable price. I won't quote the price, but I think that they did him a favor. That said, he said the guitar hurt to play when he got it back. Well, I can I can attest to that because when I first opened it, the accent was a little high and uh, even uh, higher than the average student guitar, which um, is saying something. I think what happened was that they had to reset the neck. You, there's no signs of it, but I'm guessing that they reset the neck when they re rebuilt the face. And as a result of that, they reset the neck just a degree off of what it had been before. So that said, I had tuned it up a couple times and I just tweaked the neck a couple times 
and I went about as far as I felt safe going because it is actually possible to strip out the adjustment screw so I, I let it go for for what it was I came back in this morning and I, uh, I tweaked it just a little bit more but now I'm going to do something that it also needed and that is that the uh, fingerboard needs conditioning now there's uh, I don't have a magic formula for this and a lot of people don't bother because technically that's uh, it's always a the fingerboard is always something rosewood or something like that that is non-porous doesn't really accept much oil but it does to me it helps to have uh, the moisture restored I can tell this fingerboard hasn't been uh, reconditioned for for many years sometimes I just use a relatively inexpensive guitar polish or something to do that and I put it on soak let it soak in today I'm going to try a product that I haven't used before but my my luthier recommended it and it's called guitar honey and uh, supposedly uh, that's uh, that's a good thing for the uh, for the fingerboard it says apply a thin layer of guitar honey to the fingerboard immediately buff dry with a clean soft cloth for more thorough results there's other details here so it says I'm supposed to put it on I'm supposed to wipe it off immediately so I have a clean sock cotton sock uh, that is here because it's made got a hole in it and I save cotton socks because I use them to clean up uh, auto harps Basically, you need something to get under the strings. I use socks for that. I use clean socks. Never feel bad sending me an auto harp uh, because I won't use a dirty sock on it. So I'm going to spray this guitar honey on the fingerboard, and we're going to see what the uh, what the results are like. Squirt, 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 squirt. It says immediately wipe it off. Well, I'm going to do this a little and make sure that it gets into all the little nooks and crannies because. Uh, like I said, this thing has been, uh, this fingerboard has been neglected for years. I did talk to the owner. Uh, this was given to me by a friend of a friend, and I finally got a hold of the owner and talked to him about it, uh, verified some of my suspicions about it. Turns out that he has owned it about a year since he got it back. He just hasn't played it. And he mentioned it to my friend who said, well, Paul's, you know, Paul's the ovation man, so let him take a look at it. So that's how it came into my shop. Ordinarily, I don't take on uh, this kind of project for other people unless uh, they're paying me for it, but I thought this would be an interesting project because of the age of the guitar, and also I have a personal relationship with members of the guy's family, so I figured that that's, uh, that justifies me taking on this particular project. Again, it shouldn't be a bad project. If I can get the action where it ought to be and get new strings on, then I think it'll do the job, and I certainly uh, have already explained to the fellow a brand new uh, solid guitar face is not going to have the same tone as the identical guitar face did that was uh, 46 years old. So it says immediately wipe off. So this is me immediately wiping it off. Well, it looks better. It's all shiny and pretty. Ordinarily, I don't uh, leave polish or anything on the neck when I string the guitar because I don't want the strings getting into it. It looks good. I got a little on the face. I, uh, I'll need to buff that out eventually. It just looks like a, a light oil or a, a light oil based polish the way it spreads. Okay, subsequently it says I can even sand the fingerboard with super fine steel wool. I don't need to do that, I don't believe. That's probably a little bit beyond the demands of this particular instrument. So the fellow who bought this and subsequently sent it to Ovation told me that uh, he spent about a hundred dollars for it new or when he first got it which was uh, I was it was used and not in great shape but he spent a hundred dollars for it and was tickled with it well yeah uh, the new the new balladeers which I'm not going to say whether they're they're as well made as the old ones but new balladeers are twelve hundred dollars or more and in fact uh, some of the ballot some of the older balladeers that are in great condition are still getting that kind of money so I have to I have to confess I have also been known to buy ovations in worse condition for $75 or so and get them back into playing condition so I'm not saying go out and spend 1300 or 2300 dollars 
on an Ovation guitar necessarily. I turned the sock inside out so I'd have an opportunity to buff that polish off the face a little bit with the dry surface. Okay, now it looks to me like, I hate to say it, it looks to me like I could use hit again. So what I'm going to do, despite the fact that it says um, wipe it off immediately, I'm going to spray it again, spread it again, and I'm going to let it sit. And the next time you see me, I will have wiped it off and uh, gone from there. Again, this is called Guitar Honey, a musical instrument fingerboard treatment. So, uh, the, uh, the stuff is just, this fingerboard is just so far gone, I think the two treatments are asked for in this case. As I spread this, Again, well, I'm doing this kind of thing with it because I want to get right up to the edge of the frets. I think that the previous owner that the fellow bought this from probably played it pretty hard because there's some interesting fret wear and there's even fret wear up the neck which you don't ordinarily see on an acoustic guitar so much. You usually see the fret wear right, right along here, 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 maybe here and here. And that's because a lot of acoustic guitar players use root position chords. There's a fret wear up here uh, but nothing that's so serious that it should, should cause anybody any issues. That said, I still feel that the, uh, the fingerboard itself could use a little bit more encouragement. So I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, next time you see this guitar, I will have wiped this off again and then started restringing it. Having left that stuff sit on the fingerboard for about 24 hours, it has almost entirely soaked in, which is, which is the point of the stuff. Once again, the instructions say wipe it off immediately. I don't really see any issues with having left it on this far. In fact, the fingerboard looks a whole lot better than it did when I first started. I know it's impossible to tell on this computer camera, but there used to be uh, significant differences as far as how shiny or how flat or even in some cases uh, worn or depressed that it looked on, part, on places. And uh, it almost looks like new. I'm not going to say it looks like new. Once again, I can still see the fret wear down here where the, the previous owner to the current owner must have played a lot. I know that the current owner is uh, more like me and that he tends to play in uh, root position chords. So uh, nevertheless, none of the fret wear is so bad that it should cause any buzzes. Now it's time for strings. I asked my luthier what he thought would be the brightest sounding strings for this guitar because the owner had complained that it just didn't have the sound that it used to. And he suggested the G, a GHS equivalent and the Martin Phosphor Bronze, he said were close. I'm more familiar with the Martin Phosphor Bronze. I've been using them off and on when I couldn't get some of the other strings that I liked. So I thought I would just try these. Carefully cutting the open so I don't cut all the little individual envelopes open and I have all the strings spring out and uh, hit me. When you open a pack of strings, uh, some of them will have the strings individually, some of them will have two strings per pack. This one has individual strings and it has them um, already sorted per size. This is the Foster Bronze Light. The individual packets say superior performance. Um, they run from size 12 all the way to a size 54. That's a common setup for acoustic bronze strings. Some sets start 11. I don't mind either way. When I'm using a, uh, when I'm stringing a 12 string, I will tend to pick strings that start at 11 just because there's so much more pressure on the, uh, on the neck. Now these strings, as you know, will come curled up in the little packaging and at the same time very ready to pop out. I put a little notch in the end of it just to make it easier. On the Ovation guitars, a lot of other guitars, but Ovation has a bridge that it does they don't use bridge pins like St. Martin does. And so you pull it up that little hole and uh, pull it all the way to the top. When you get to the top you shoot the string through the peg and then I like to bring it around and then kink it a little right there like so. So I don't know if you can see that kink but as that uh, 
That way when I start tightening it up, the kink kind of helps it to stay in place uh, as, it, as it begins to tighten. Once it's tightened thoroughly, that's not quite so critical. But you don't want to be in a position where a string is so loose that you're just tightening and tightening the knob and the, um, and the string is just pulling right back out again. When I say string, of course, this is a high-grade wire. Um, they call them strings because uh, they, they resemble strings and they used to make them out of uh, cat gut and things of that nature. Metal strings uh, didn't really start to become all that popular in the uh, 1800s when the guitar as the guitar was rising in popularity now i uh, see i'm making sure that it's coming up the right place in the saddle here this this part of the bridge is called the saddle and uh, it determines how high the strings are off of the face of the guitar this part of the guitar is called the nut and the little slots in the nut should be just higher than the first fret now as i'm tightening this i'm not going to go very far i'm just going to go until it starts to sound like a string and then I'm going to pick up the opposite the heaviest string on the guitar I'm going to do the same thing with it uh, this is a call a wound string because the there are tiny windings along uh, along a, a wire core okay now see I've got this one started up through the bridge as well I'm sorry, my eyesight's a little funky when it comes to uh, close-up things like that. That is a unique sound that I hope you never have to uh, listen to someone else doing because it's very aggravating. In fact, it was used as a sound effect in a Tom Hanks movie called That Thing You Do, where uh, a, a jerk lead guitar player singer is having an argument with his girlfriend and tuning his or restringing his guitar at the same time and they keep using that as a sound effect which eh, it's effective for the scene in the movie and it's another reason why you shouldn't bother tuning your guitar you shouldn't be restringing your guitar when there's some somebody with with good hearing in the room because it'll drive them crazy it's like chalk on a blackboard now again uh, these this part uh, with the with the heavier strings is easier to uh, it's easier to see the kink on. You see, I kink it here and here. So then as I tighten it and the, uh, the winding goes this way, then that kink kind of holds it all in place until the just the sheer tension of the string begins to hold it in place. I'm actually holding the string down a little to kind of force it. Also, I like to hold the string down so that it goes, the, heavy, the strings go underneath the little holes and now and don't don't wrap around the above the holes because then they actually will get too close to the to the top of the little knob here and have a danger of coming off so this is me putting the low e string on again you see i've left a lot of slack um you don't have to leave quite that much slack but some people uh some people prefer it. I kind of prefer to leave at least a few turns on the peg. A few turns of wire on the peg. I just think that it is a little bit more secure that way. Uh, with you, sometimes when you buy a guitar brand new and it's been, the strings have been put on a factory, there's only one or two turns on the peg. And uh, usually it's fine. So that's not, a, uh, that's not really something to, to get too paranoid about. So I'm not going to leave this video on while I do the whole thing, but I am going to get this string on and then I'll turn the video off and keep stringing the guitar. At this point, my goal is to get the strings on, not to get them tight and not to get them in tune one at a time. That comes later. So it's, it's tight enough to sound like this. See, that's still too loose, you see. It's tight enough to sound like a guitar string. So you're still too loose. And that's as far as I need to go with it before I put the, the next string on. Uh, I'm going to stop it now and put the other strings on and then and uh, start tuning it up. One more string to go and I realized that when I talked about 
kinking a string on the end before I started to install it. I was really talking about what you have to do for ovations. If you have a guitar that has bridge pins, which say the Martins do, you don't need to do that. But this is just to help it get through that little hole and come out where it's supposed to on the bridge as you begin to pull the string through. Also, and I mentioned that the string that these strings are actually made of wire. It occurred to me that you never hear them called wire by guitar players which is one of the funny things about the ending of the goodbye girl in which the young man is leaving on a trip and the girl's sure he's never going to come back and just as he's leaving for good for uh, getting on get, uh, taking his ticket to the station or whatever he's doing he says oh by the way uh, while I'm out could you have them put some new wires on my guitar and the uh, that's the sign, that's the happy moment for the uh, end of the end of the show where the girl realizes that he was, really is coming back or he wouldn't have left his guitar in her apartment. Now what's the problem with that is that uh, if he actually played guitar he wouldn't have called them wires. But they are wires and they can be deadly. Uh, if you look at this, you don't want to string your guitar and leave the wires like this and then just uh, be you know poking people's eye out for the rest of the week so before you even start stringing your guitar you want to have a pair of wire cutters on hand I also like to have uh, needle specifically needle nose pliers and I'll show you why in a second but uh this is uh this gets me to the point where I'm ready to start tuning these strings up a little bit I will tune the guitar provisionally before I uh, mess with uh, with cutting these back by the way, uh, if you want to look really cool, you actually just weave this stuff all in instead of cutting it off. And uh, that way everybody will think that you just strung your guitar and you put brand new strings on it and you're really cool. Um, but that's not sustainable because the second time you show up to, a, to an open mic or a gig or even a jam session with your, uh, with your strings like this, they're going to go... Oh man, you just don't have the uh, you don't have a good guitar etiquette of, uh, of uh, trimming your strings. So I'm going to uh, shut this um, off again for a moment. I'm going to do a provisional tuning. When I say provisional, that's because it's uh, the first time you tune a guitar after you put new strings on. It all, the tuning only lasts a few minutes before you need to tune it again, but it'll give me a give me an idea of what the action is going to be like with the new strings on it. When you're putting new strings on a guitar, several things happen. One is uh, that the strings do stretch a little bit. The other thing is that the neck pulls up just slightly with every new string that you tighten. So you can tune the E string, have it perfect. And then when you add the, D, the A string and you bring it up to tune, the E string is going to be just a tiny bit flat. So that by the time you're done, the uh, lower strings need tuned again. And uh, the other thing happens is that the neck itself will start to pull just a little and depending on uh, depending on the quality of the guitar it'll uh, it uh, may pull more than just a little but it nevertheless it's a slow process and sometimes it'll it'll actually take a day before the the strings and the neck are actually happy with each other again I have uh Tune the guitar up to where it's a uh, reasonably good tune. My uh, other concern was the action on guitar, which I've already tried to adjust a couple times. It was pretty stiff. Uh, the strings were pretty high off the neck. I really do believe that when he got the guitar back from ovation, the neck wasn't set exactly right. As I sight down the neck, there is still pretty much straight. If anything, it's still a tiny, tiny bit concave. And by that, I mean it comes up like this just a tiny bit. Ordinarily, some people actually like it that way. That said, it's not exactly the same angle on both, on both sides. You know how you sight down an arrow to see if it's straight? Well, maybe you've never had an arrow in your hands, but this is what you do. You sight down the neck of the guitar to see how straight it is. On this side, it's actually slightly concave. On this side, it's slightly convex so uh, I don't know if I can do much more uh, tightening on this neck without actually uh, causing some damage this is very rare uh, this class of ovation has a five piece neck there's literally one two three four five pieces of wood that run the whole length and of course the adjustment rod is uh, is, is inside besides that 
but uh, one of the things that happens is uh, with the guitars uh, is that with humidity changes the neck tends to pull back if it's getting dry and tends to pull forward if it's getting uh, really humid and with the five pieces of wood that are in the better ovation necks all those pieces of wood go in different directions so if this part of the wood is tending to pull one direction at the same time the other pieces of wood are tending to pull the other direction it keeps us very very straight and very uh, resistant to uh, humidity changes um, I have an Ovation 12 string, same neck, and it, uh, I would say, uh, once a year, uh, every fall when it's been dry for a really long time, and every spring when it starts to really get, really get wet, the change is noticeable. On my other guitars, on my Legend, and uh, my other Ovation guitars, you don't even notice that. So I will point that out. If you have a Balladeer or a Legend, or a long neck or any of the other guitars that have the uh, five piece neck, you'll discover that um, your friend's spending a whole lot more time tuning than you do. My first guitar, I would get into a crowded coffee house or club and I would be tuning it literally every song because the humidity would be so high. And when I got my first ovation, a friend of mine told me that I was gonna have to learn more songs and he was almost right. Except I'm a folk singer so I never run out of songs anyway. Well, that was actually in tune a few uh, minutes ago and I was starting to get out, but it's still playable. The bar chords were playable, which they weren't before. I think I'll tweak it one more time and try to bring it back just a little, which means I'm going to have to detune this and uh, bring out the nut driver one more time. Now that I have adjusted the neck, back as far as I really dare. I'm going to make a quick check to make sure I didn't add fret buzz because if the frets are too uneven, especially near this end of the guitar, you can get fret buzz if the action is too low. So this is I don't hear any fret buzz, do you? Of course the guitar went out of tune just in the time amount of time I was doing that. Once again I'm using the piano here instead of a digital tuner. used to doing this it's a good practice do it once in a while helps train your ear the other thing that happens with a lot of digital tuners if your strings are way off um, it just confuses them and so to, to use the piano to get them close to tune and use a digital tuner to get it tuned the rest of the way that really will do the job let me try those bar chords again I think I'll call that as close as I dare. Well, I'm not going to say that this guitar sounds like it did before the face was broken and replaced but it's got a pretty good sound to me and the action is playable it's not perfect if this is my guitar 
I would probably crank it back just a little more. But since the neck is just a one degree wonky from what it ought to be, uh, since it's not my guitar and I don't want to risk blowing it up for the poor fellow, I think I'll leave it the way it is. And uh, next time he has it tuned, next time he, he, he wants it tuned, he may ask his uh, guitar, whoever his real guitar tech is, to take a look at the neck and see if it can be brought back anymore without causing damage to the instrument. Um, by the way, if it looked a little awkward to be stringing the guitar on the table, that's because I don't usually do it that way. I usually sit in a chair without arms and do it uh, sitting down. I did it this way so I could demonstrate it. And now that I have the uh, guitar uh, and tuning the same, the same way, ordinarily I wouldn't leave it on a table and tune it. And that's why I finally just gave up and put a strap on it so I could stand by the piano and tune it myself. That said, now I still have the dangerous wires sticking out in every direction and uh, the way you, you deal with that is not just cut them off but also bend them down so what I like to do uh, I'll start with a g-string here I'll pull this so that it is as kinked as it as it really can be so it's nice and kinked against against the peg head so I cut it with a half an inch or less to spare and then I use my needle nose pliers to turn that sucker down so it doesn't stab the next person that picks the guitar up. If you can see that, I've used the pliers to turn that down. Let me do it with the uh, D string now. So with the D string, I kink it as hard as I can. Okay, now it's good and kinked. I take my uh, needle nose pliers, I cut it with less than half an inch to go and then I bend it down so it's not a danger to the next person that picks up the guitar in fact I'm going to bend the G the G string back down even a little farther so that way it's it's safer why not cut it right up against the peg head because I want that additional protection of that extra kink in there and if I cut it right up against the peg head I could lose that so I'm going to do the other two and come back to me a pair of needle nose pliers is is so important to guitar ownership that um, I try not to get caught without them uh, which is kind of funny because after 9-11 uh, sadly uh, a number of guitar players got in trouble because they took their guitars on the airplanes and they had the needle nose pliers in the uh, in the guitar case and people were like oh you're going to use your needle nose pliers to hijack the plane uh, there's nothing funny about 9-11 but they had some weird side effects in the way that uh, people responded to simple things like like a tool that's far less dangerous in the long run than a ballpoint pen so uh, you can see hopefully that the strings are where they need to be and they're behaving themselves let me uh, try it one more time here see in just that amount of time the guitar has gone gone out of tune again that's okay that's a normal part of tuning a guitar and any uh, any guitar will uh, require tuning uh, several times the first day you tune it I uh, will cut a couple times the next day after you change the strings and then after that usually just when you sit down to play and usually it's a minor adjustment I'm going to go um, I, I, I decided while I was doing that that I could still tweak the action back a little more so I'm going to uh, do that one more time I'm going to take another tweak on the action so I'll see you again in a minute it got very close to having some fret buzz on the uh, low E string so I didn't want to go any farther. I think I've got it as, as far back as I dare take it without, uh, without starting to cause other problems. The uh, bar chords are much easier now than they were. At any rate, it's starting to feel like an ovation guitar to me. At 
and then a little bit starting to sound like an ovation guitar to me. So I think I'm going to leave it as it is. I will uh, tell the owner it's uh, it's ready, and he can pick it up whenever is uh, sufficient for him. I will uh, have to put the little um, cover back over the adjustment screw, but that is uh, that's a minute's work, and uh, the guitar will be as ready to go as it's going to be on this pass. Once again, a uh, guitar that's been this neglected for so long. Um, it did take probably a lot more work than it ordinarily would. Uh, the next time he has, next time he changes the strings, might be a good time to look at the neck, at the neck again. But I think this is as close as I, as I want to get without getting it, getting into trouble and maybe actually causing, causing damage uh, to a guitar that has frankly been neglected for far too long. Professional guitar, beat to death, literally, restored partially and uh, cleaned up and tuned up and adjusted and ready to go. This would be considered off the shelf ready if I was in the, back in the music store again. I would consider the, this guitar ready to sell as is. Uh, once again, it is an Ovation Balladeer. If, uh, if you see the legend, it's just a little bit better equipped. The sound is similar because it, uh, even though the, the cosmetics of the face are better, the Seca Spruce is very close to this. Uh, Ovation made several guitars in this class, uh, the Balladeer and the Legend being the most popular. You will seldom see a Balladeer with a face that looks this good, but that's because it's a new face. That's okay. The face, uh, as the face ages, it's likely to get more beat up, it's likely to get some scratches, and that's fine because the sound will improve every every year as long as he owns the guitar. I'm going to be putting this uh, back, this back together putting a guitar in a case and calling the owner. So I hope that you've enjoyed at least part of this journey and that maybe you've learned something and maybe you've decided that uh, that you don't want me touching your guitars ever. And that's okay, because that's not my job. But this is how I take care of my, my obese and I thought you might enjoy seeing that. So have a most lovely afternoon or evening or whatever time of the day it is that you're watching this. And uh, good luck with all of your musical instruments and with all of your musical endeavors. Mm -hmm.